So far we have built scheduled tasks, detailed fabrication, shipping, and erection. We put in project breakdown of sequences, showed you how to put in lots as well. And then that built our Gantt chart. And then we came over here and put in start dates and end dates for all of the sequences um, along with all the tasks there. And that has built our the, the skeleton of our Gantt chart here. So now we're going to talk about all of these fields in here. We're not going to use all these, but we're going to talk about them. Um, if you don't see all of these when you open that up, you can go down here to the Gantt chart display settings. Open that up. Um, if you can't see it real well, you can move these up and down. But I have everything turned on with the exception of the baseline. You can turn those on if you wanted to as well. Um, and I'm going to close that back down. So that's how you turn on all these fields here. So let's talk about some of these as we get it through here. We obviously talked about start date, end date, and then that gives us our duration. That's pretty simple there. Now we've got quantity and weight. These fields will automatically be populated whenever we import bill of material into or release for fabrication into production control. They'll automatically come over. You'll see the quantity and the weight for each sequence there. Um, percent complete will automatically be populated as well. Now let's go back and talk about that. If you remember on fabrication tasks, we had it, we ha had set it to calculate based off of production progress, or in other words, the number of stations that um, we've recorded that um, have been completed on each piece in, in the uh, in the process. So, based off of that production progress calculated by weight, there, then we should see here. Um, this percent completed for fabrication being the actual work that has been done in the shop. Now this is where um, this varies some from what I see percent complete being considered on a lot of schedules. Percent complete on a lot of schedules is the amount of hours that we worked. When in reality, that's not the percent completed. Percent completed is really your the number of pieces that have gotten done in the shop. Um, so um, this this um, is a variation of that that is based off the actual work getting done in your shop. Now the original estimated hours here, by the way, I'm going to turn on the inner edit mode so you can see what we can change here. Original estimated hours is how many hours it's going to take to uh, to do this particular task um, based off of our estimate. Um, so I'm going to put in here, say for detailing, we're going to have 40 hours on these. We'll have one guy on it for all that time. Fabrication, maybe we say uh, 500, 500. Oops. Now let me, let me illustrate here one thing we can do. I'm going to back this back out. Let me back that back out there. One thing I could do is um, to come over here to schedule tasks on fabrication. I told you I like to fill this out on the Gantt chart, um, but um, you could right here say that this is 5,000 hours, whatever. Save, and then on project or on my Gantt chart, it fills in and splits that up evenly amongst all of the sequences. So I kind of like filling it out here, but you can do it this way if you'd like. It's a very effective way to do it. Put in your total estimated hours for fabrication, and it splits it up evenly amongst every task now, or um, amongst every um, sequence here. But let's say that no sequence one, based off the work that's coming out, that's going to be 1,100 hours. You'll see that the rest of these adjust accordingly to in order to equal that 5,000. Let's say that... Sequence four, that's going to be 1,100 hours as well. And let's say that sequence five is only going to be 700. So all those adjust accordingly in order to equal that 5,000 up there. So that can be a very effective way to do that. Or I could just walk down through there and plug in whatever I wanted. So original estimated hours, you'll need to fill that, you'll need to fill that in. 
um, it does not pull over from the estimate. I get that question quite a lot from clients. It does not pull over from the estimate. For one thing, the estimate, probably you didn't know sequences at the time, so you probably don't have your uh, breakdown that way. Most fabricators would not. Some I know do, but it does not pull over. So just by filling that in, you'll see that the unreleased has automatically filled in. It knows that um, the, the production control job that we have, we haven't imported anything into it yet. So it knows that all of these hours so far are unreleased hours, which will come into play on our production schedule as we move forward. Now the base hours are hours that would be coming over from estimating into production control, looking at the, piece, the actual pieces we have in there, basically re-estimating it and putting in the base hours here. So uh, we'll see that happen as we link to a project and um, we'll see that flow over there. Um, the adjustment is if we, let's say we had 100 hours of rework on a project, then I could put in, whoops, not in base hours. Let's say I wanted to put in, come on now, I hit escape rather than tab. Say I had 100 hours of rework I needed to do. It adds that 100 hours to my original estimated to give us planned hours of 1,200. This planned hours is what is going to be used to, on our production schedule based off of our resource. And we'll get there in a, in a subsequent video to this. Notice you do have percent released as well. So here's unreleased, and if some, some of it had been released, it would give us a percentage here as well. I'm gonna back this back out. All right, now we've got linked hours, regular hours, overtime hours, and total hours. The linked hours is coming from processing the production stations and plugging in hours every time someone processes a production station in the shop. Um, there's an hours and minutes um, field down there that will flow directly into the linked hours here. Um, or regular hours and overtime hours and total hours, we could plug in hours or import hours to fill those in. We'll get into that in a subsequent video as well. Utilization percent, we'll illustrate this later, but it's basically the number of hours that we've actually utilized. So if I had 100 hours on sequence one, I've worked 60 hours, my utilization would be 60%. We'll illustrate this as we go down further. And then we can assign these to a particular person if we needed to. Uh, it might make sense on detailing. If I was um, doing a detailing schedule, I would probably want to assign this to a particular detailer if, um, if I had just one guy working on it here. So it might make sense. You could do that if you want. It shows up in his tasks. Um, resource that we assigned back here on our schedule tasks. There's the resource that we assigned. I could also do, just do that on the Gantt chart. So like for instance, I could choose a different one here. And this might would make sense for those of you that have multiple shops, where you, you might be doing sequence one in one shop, you might be doing sequence two in a different shop. So you could assign those resources separately there if you would want to. Then we've got some pre uh, predecessors and successors showing up here just for our informational purposes as well. So that's what some of these fields mean. You'll see this played out as we go through the rest of these videos. You'll see our base hours flowing over. You'll see, we'll go ahead and add in some hours that we actually worked. We'll show you how to import those as well. And then see how this plays out on our project schedule as well as our production schedule.